what were the physics involved here before we turn to the moral political issues? Well, in a fission reaction, there's a split of the nucleus, as we've discussed many times, of a plutonium or a uranium nucleus, where the two halves are set into a kind of oblong shape enough so that they can no longer hold together, and the two sides then, because each side is highly charged, fly apart, releasing enormous energy and several neutrons which can excite and destroy more and more nuclei in the famous chain reaction. Well, thermonuclear reactions, nuclear fusion, functions very differently. Instead of splitting a big fat nucleus, like a plutonium or a uranium nucleus, it takes two very small nuclei, variations on hydrogen, and squishes them together, and in their combination, it releases a tremendous amount of energy. And that turns out to be much more powerful than the splitting process. Let's look at this a little more closely. A thermonuclear reaction involves these different kinds of hydrogen. A simple hydrogen nucleus is just a proton by itself, and a hydrogen atom has one electron going around it. But if that proton were to be joined by a neutron, it's called deuterium, and we write it as capital D with a subscript 1, meaning there's one proton. We know this notation from the fission section of the course. D sub 1 and then a superscript 2, meaning the total weight, number of protons plus number of neutrons, is 2. So it has one proton and one neutron, so we write it as d sub 1 super 2. And then, in addition, we have tritium, which we write as t sub 1, which is, again, one proton. It's just a hydrogen nucleus. But now it's joined by two neutrons, so it's got one proton and two neutrons, so its total weight is 1 plus 2, or 3. Tritium is a substance that's sometimes produced uh, in reactors and in Fukushima, for example. It's famously leaking into the water supply and going out to the ocean to the consternation of fishermen in the area. So in a nuclear fusion reaction, you could combine two hydrogens, or you could combine a deuterium and a tritium, or two deuteriums, but these reactions are differently productive of energy. It turns out that the easiest one to do, and the most productive of energy, and therefore of a fusion weapon, is to take one deuterium and join it to a tritium, so that you have a D sub 1 super 2 plus a T for tritium sub 1 super 3, and what those become is a helium nucleus, which has two protons and two neutrons, that's the helium sub 2 super 4, plus one neutron, which has no protons, so we write n sub 0 and superscript 1, indicating that its atomic weight is 1. So as always, if you add the number of protons on the left side of that red reaction, you've got 1 plus 1 equals 2 plus 0, and the total weight, number of protons plus neutrons, is also the same on both sides, namely 2 for the deuterium, 3 for the tritium, which makes 5, which is equal on the right-hand side to 4, 2 protons plus two neutrons plus one, namely the neutron which has a weight of one. So you have five on both sides. But when the deuterium and the tritium combine, they not only make a helium and a neutron, they also produce an enormous amount of energy, about 17 uh, million electron volts, which means that uh, it would be the energy that an electron would have if it crossed between two wires that were separated um, by 17 million uh, volts. So that's a tremendously powerful reaction, and the goal of making a thermonuclear bomb is to combine enough deuterium and tritium to produce that in a way that will continue to engage a large enough volume of it to emit a massive amount of energy.